Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. Today we're going to talk about starting your own seeds or starting your own plants for your garden from seeds as opposed to buying young plants in the, uh, in the store. Alright, why should you grow from seeds? Alright, for one reason, you save a whole lot of money growing from seeds, but I think a more important reason is because you should be saving your seeds um, if, uh, if the stores ever sell out of seeds for whatever reason and can't get more in, you're going to be glad that you have been saving your seeds. All right, now, let me say first off, I'm not against buying young plants uh, in the store and planting them uh, in your garden rather than starting from seeds. Um, a lot of times that's a really good option because when you buy uh, the, the young plants, you've already gotten like about a month or maybe a two-month head start. On your plants uh, as opposed to just putting the seed in the ground I mean you're already two months ahead which really really is a, is a big plus uh, when you do buy seeds I recommend you buy heirloom seeds uh, that way you can save your seeds and uh, and replant them next year and get the same kind of plant that that you started with all right so there may be times you want to buy the plants from the store there may be times you want to plant your own seeds all right, this uh, video is about starting from your own seeds. Now, there are certain plants that it, it's just better to go ahead and plant the seed right into, into the ground. Uh, radishes, for example. Uh, the plants that germinate uh, very quickly uh, can be planted that way and are probably best planted that way. The other plants that you want to plant before uh, you're able to plant them outdoors um, generally, when you want to, what you want to do is you want to plant your seeds about uh, six weeks before the last frost, the last average frost date uh, in your area. And that's the date that you can look up uh, for your area. Uh, so look up the last, the average last frost date. And about six weeks prior to that is, as a general rule of thumb, when you want to plant, to start your seeds indoors all right then six six uh, uh six weeks later the plant should be big enough it's time to plant them outside you can go ahead and plant them outside um, and get a head start now if you have um, not done that and it's time to plant them outside and all you've got is seeds then you might be better off just going to the store and buying the plants if you can find the plants that you want go ahead and buy the plants because that way you've got about a month or two a uh, head start which can make a big difference in the amount of food that you're going to get from the uh, plants that you're planting. Here are just some of the options that you have for uh, starting your seeds. Of course, you can use any kind of pot. You can use clay pots, and sometimes I do use uh, clay pots. Um, but these, when I buy uh, when I buy the plants from the store, uh, they come in these things right here often. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll I'll buy at least six of these, and I'll go ahead and get a, a tray like this from the store. And these are very convenient. To start your seeds in um, and being in this tray right here when it comes time to take your little plants outside to um, so they can get adjusted to being outside you don't have to pick these up individually you can just take the whole tray like that and that's some um, the advantage of the tray but anyway these are recycled these are from plants that I bought and then um, and then I, I just washed them with a, with a water hose high pressure water hose Here's another one, same thing. These are little pots that I saved in, in a tray. Uh, notice the different colors. Uh, that's nice if you can get different colors because what I'll do is I'll plant like a certain type of plant in a particular color. And that way, sometimes a little tab that I stick in there identifying the plant, uh, sometimes if that tab gets lost, then if I have a bunch of these yellow ones with a particular plant that I know, then I'll then I'll know that well th this one here that lost its marker is probably the same one that's in the other yellow ones. See here I have some purple ones, some white ones, and some green ones. So I keep these together like that just so if I'm going to plant, um, you know, three or even more uh, of a particular type, I'll try to keep them in the same color. Not necessary. Here's another recycled one. These are like the four-inch pots. Again, when I buy these, I buy enough so I can go ahead and pick up a tray with them. So these didn't cost me anything. All right, you can also buy these. These are some that I bought. Um, this is the same thing we were just looking at before. 
these things cost about two dollars for an entire set of six of these it's like two dollars for the tray two dollars for a set of six of these and it's three dollars for the plastic cover that goes on top of it now the uh, the cover is nice because when you're growing these indoors uh, it, it helps um, maintain the the humidity in there which helps the seed germinate a little bit better and then uh, when your seed comes up through here uh, then you can go ahead and take the top off but it just kind of protects it uh, sometimes when you're growing these inside uh, we keep the temperature in the house kind of cool uh, but it helps uh, maintain the um, a more steady temperature and maintains the humidity and just helps the seed germinate quicker and I mix up my own soil for starting the seeds in that's another way to save a lot of money plus you get exactly what you want in your soil um, I've already mixed this this up here you're stirring it stirring it for here this is ready to go all right what so what I did is I started with vermiculite uh, vermiculite is um, very good to add to your starting mixture because it retains the uh, moisture in the soil real good and um, I've already mixed it in here the vermiculite the vermiculite are these uh, white these white pieces that are in here they're all natural they're organic all right according to uh, some instructions um, you put one part vermiculate and one part peat uh, some instructions say one part vermiculate, two parts peat. Some say one part vermiculate, one part peat, and one part uh, compost. I started with the bag here. I wanted to use two part, two parts peat. So once I dumped this in in there um, in my cart here, then I took this and I filled it with this uh, peat moss twice and uh, making sure I broke up all the the little pieces you don't need big chunks in there you're going to break it up as fine fine as possible when you're when you're planting seeds so i filled this up twice dump that in here and also added a bag i filled this bag up with some compost um and i also threw in some a couple of um shovelfuls of rabbit manure because i've got it and rabbit manure is really good and i have it so i decided to use it it's not necessary uh, now rabbit manure is manure that you can add directly to your garden. It will not burn. Now some manures like chicken manure, cow manure, horse manure, you need to let it rot for about a year before you add it to your garden, otherwise it could burn it. So be careful if you're adding manure, make sure you know what you're doing. But I did put a little rabbit manure in there. Another thing I added to my mixture was beneficial bacteria. This is the one that I used here. It contains uh, the biozone formula. Um, now you can get other brands. Uh, this just happens to be one, one that I used here. Normally I buy this in a much larger bag. Um, last time I bought this, it was in about, I think a 20 or 30 pound bag. Um, that was to spread in, in my entire garden. And what I did was, uh, last time I tilled my garden, I put a whole large bag of the beneficial bacteria over the soil, sprinkled a lid over the soil, sprinkled a whole bag of the trace minerals that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. I uh, sprinkled that over and uh, plus some manure and I tilled that all into my garden. So it's very important to have the beneficial bacteria and it's very important to have the trace minerals. A lot of times um, our soil has been overworked and sometimes the soil is, in certain areas is just deficient in trace minerals. Trace minerals are very, very, very essential. Trace uh, minerals are rocks. They're not like vitamins that you can produce and that plants can produce. If the minerals are not in the soil, they are, they are not going to be in the food. Trace minerals are extremely important for your health. And they're also important for the health of your plants. And a lot of times the diseases uh, that plants suffer from uh, are actually, they're susceptible to certain diseases because there may be certain minerals, certain trace minerals that are deficient in the soil. And the minerals, I'm gonna talk about the minerals here in a minute. There'll be a hundred, about a hundred different little trace uh, minerals that I'll be adding to the soil. But getting back to the beneficial bacteria, here on the back, you can see here's a list of the different, back, it's a bacteria uh, that's in there, this whole list of uh, 
beneficial bacteria over here and over here. Uh, a lot of times the soil is a deficient in bacteria. It could be deficient in bacteria for a lot of reasons. One reason being just overworking of the soil, but especially if the soil has ever had any type of chemical poisoning in it, um, you know, even fertilizer, a lot of things will kill the beneficial bacteria and your, your soil could be deficient in, in the beneficial bacteria. The beneficial bacteria in the soil is extremely important because the beneficial bacteria clings to the roots of the plants and the beneficial bacteria is what allows the plants to absorb the trace minerals that are in the soil. So you can have very a lot of good trace minerals in the soil, but if you don't have the beneficial bacteria in the soil, then you are going to, or your plants are not going to be able to use that, um, those, those minerals very well. So one thing you want to add, I add to my um, starter here, but I also add to my garden, is you want to add beneficial bacteria, and you also want to add trace minerals. And the trace minerals I'm going to add are, um, contain about, um, I don't know, about a hundred different trace minerals, and um, I'll talk about the um, trace minerals in a minute here. These are the trace minerals I like to add to my garden. Azomite. A through Z of minerals. Micronized. Very good. Uh, don't get hung up on brands. Uh, you may be different, um, different brands available where you are. Uh, this one comes from Utah and I'm in Missouri so I assume that this one gets across the country. You want micronized. The smaller the particle size, the easier it's going to be to for your plants to uh, use it. Buy this in 44 pound bags. Azomite. Here's what the azomite looks like. As you can see, it's uh, extremely fine, almost baby powder fineness. And I put about two scoops. This is my little my little shovel here. I put about two of these heaping scoops like this um, in a batch of um, potting soil that I'm going to show you the uh, seedling starting mixture. I'm going to show you here. All right, you want to break sure if you get these chunks. You want to make sure you break all the chunks because this is going to go into small little containers. And it's going to be for starting seeds in your garden that wouldn't be so important but when you're starting seeds in these little small containers you want to break it up as fine as possible mix it up real good all right now and now this is ready to go into uh, my starting pots and what i'll do i'll go ahead and fill the uh, my starting part uh, pots and then with additional that i have I'll go ahead and just fill up some of these uh, plastic bags uh, that I've saved um, just for that purpose and uh, so I'll store this in a plastic bag so when I need more I don't have to I don't have to do this mixture here um, more than once or twice a year I don't have to do it every time I just need some just to, to start some more seeds I just go in here and get the mixture that I've already mixed up very very important to label everything and so this says it has a uh, peat moss I want to take my uh, permanent marker, mark out, mark out the peat moss, and write on here what's in here. And I'll have my seed starting mixture. I'll write on here, and I might also write write down the ingredients that I've added. But very important when you do something like this that you mark what is in here. Doesn't take but a minute. This is where I start my plants. This is a um, shelf I built out of two by fours. I put it in front of um, a south facing window. You wouldn't know it right now because it's nighttime, but uh, this is a south facing window and this is the window where I get uh, the most sun. All right, these are bread trays that I just picked up at an estate sale, aluminum bread trays and I built the um, shelf here <clears throat> to fit these these trays <clears throat> these trays are really convenient because when you water your plants the water is collected in here and so it doesn't run all over everything in your house 
Um, plus, um, if you have one of these trays filled and you want to take your plants outside, you can just take the whole tray and you can take the plants out one tray at a time to harden them off. Also, if you water your plants too much, the water will collect in the trays here again without running all over your house and then your um, your plants can wick the uh, moisture back up from uh, these trays. Uh, very convenient if you can get a hold of these for fairly cheap. And um, one more thing I'll mention before I end this video is don't forget to harden your plants off. All right, now because plants grown inside are not challenged by uh, by the wind or breezes and so they grow very very weak uh, long spindle, spindly very weak uh, stems and you've probably noticed that for plants grown indoors uh, the way you can make your plants to grow a stronger stems when it's indoors actually get a little fan blowing a really light breeze across your plants um, if not constantly at least um, <clears throat> a few hours each day have a little fan, not blowing them too hard, but just a little fan, just a little light breeze blowing across your plants. <clears throat> That'll help them grow a stronger stem. And then very important, um, you want to harden them off outdoors as soon as uh, you're able to. Um, and when the plants get a certain size and you're you're getting ready to uh, take them outside and plant them in a, in a few weeks, uh, just take the whole tray on. When you have a nice day outside where temperatures are above well above freezing just pull out the whole tray of plants and take it outside let them sit uh, start off you don't want to start off with uh, too much uh, sun just start them off with uh, just maybe a, an hour or two of sun and um, then take it back inside when the temperatures drop at night and then the next day take them out for a few hours of sun and gradually increase the amount of sun that they get um, and that way your plants will grow They'll get challenged by the breeze and they'll start getting adjusted to the sun. They'll grow very strong stems um, and then they'll be ready when you take them outside to uh, transplant in your garden. organic apples at Costco's came in the last time I bought some. It's a nice little plastic container. When I get something like this, I have a real hard time recycling it or throwing it away. Uh, rather than recycle, I like to reuse things like this, but those among you who are on a budget, want to spend less money on um, containers, something like this is very good. I've heard people also using egg cartons. To me, egg cartons are too small. This right here is just the perfect size. Uh, you fill your soil in here, you plant your seeds in here, of course. You close it down, you got a nice little greenhouse effect in here. Light goes through, your plants grow. Then when you get ready to transplant them, you don't worry about taking out the whole thing. You just kind of scoop out, take a, a tablespoon or something, just scoop out your plant and plant it in the ground just like that, trying to disturb the roots as little as possible. Uh, now if you use something like this, what you want to do is you want to poke a hole in each one of these for some uh, ventilation and also poke a couple of holes in the bottom too for drainage but anyway uh, you know be creative and um, reuse things like this I reuse things like this all the time great little seed starter put that in your uh, in your house in your window start your seeds wonderful idea